Welcome back to Chemistry Matters Unit 9, our Kinetics and Gases Unit. We learned in the first video on our Unit 9 playlist that rates of reaction can be explained on a molecular level using the collision theory. In this video, we turn our attention to understanding how molecular motion also explains the unique properties of gases. Have you ever wondered about the incredible properties of gases? For example, how can hot air make a 600-pound balloon rise high above the Earth? And what is air pressure? There's approximately one ton of air pressing down on us, assuming we're at sea level. That's about equal to the weight of a small car. Why can't we feel it? It turns out that air exerts an equal force in all directions. Since the same pressure of air is all around us, as well as inside of us, the forces are balanced and we feel no net pressure. We would begin to feel air pressure if the air outside of us was at a different pressure than the air inside of us. The effects of a change in air pressure can be very apparent. Air pressure differences are responsible for creating wind and for making your ears pop while on an airplane. We can see the dramatic effect of a change in air pressure when we create a temporary vacuum inside a container like this soda can. I'll put my goggles on for safety and show you what I mean. There's just a little bit of water in this soda can. I've boiled that water, replacing the air inside with hot water vapor. When we invert the can into cold water, we trap the water vapor, which condenses into liquid water, lowering the pressure inside the can. The atmospheric air pressure outside the can is now much greater than the air pressure inside the can, which caused the can to crush. This is an impressive demonstration, and you can even do this yourself. Just make sure to take safety precautions, such as using tongs and wearing eye-protecting goggles. Another interesting property of gases is their ability to diffuse. Gases spread out to fill any size container they're put into. That's why we can smell an odor created on another side of the room. In fact, in order to smell anything at all, the odor-creating molecule must be in gas form. Only a gas can diffuse its way into the olfactory receptors in our nose. By the 19th century, scientists understood the macroscopic properties of gases as described by pressure, volume, temperature, and quantity. But they weren't able to explain why gases behave in the unique way they do. Over a period of about 100 years, with contributions by many scientists, gases came to be viewed as tiny molecules spaced far apart, moving independently and rapidly through space until they collided with something. This microscopic view of gases, collectively called the kinetic molecular theory, explained properties of gases such as their compressibility and ability to fill any container they occupy. Today, scientists consider the kinetic molecular theory a fundamental model for the behavior of atoms and molecules in a gas. The kinetic molecular theory has five components. Gases are made of particles that are very small and far apart. The vast amount of space between particles explains why gases are compressible. Gas particles are in constant random motion. This random motion allows for the spreading out of gas particles until they are uniformly distributed in their container. Gas pressure is caused by collisions between gas particles and the container walls. The more frequent the collisions, the higher the pressure. As you inflate a tire, you're introducing more gas particles, causing more collisions, and therefore increased pressure. There are no forces of attraction or repulsion between gas particles, which explains why they're so far apart. This lack of interaction also explains why all gases mix spontaneously with one another, regardless of their identity. The average kinetic energy of gas particles is proportional to the temperature in Kelvin. An increase in temperature causes an increase in the kinetic energy of the particles, 
which in turn causes more collisions with container walls and higher pressure. Now that you know the theory behind the behavior of gases, let's go back to our classroom to see gases in action. Ideal gases are gases that follow the behavior described by the kinetic molecular theory. The two most important assumptions about an ideal gas are that there are no intermolecular forces between gas molecules and the volume of the gas molecules themselves are so small as to be negligible compared to the volume between the molecules. Of course, real gases do have intermolecular forces, and their molecules do have volumes. A perfectly ideal gas doesn't really exist. But many gases approximate the behavior of ideal gases, which greatly simplifies the calculations we can use to describe these gases. Most gases will behave ideally under normal conditions, although under extreme conditions of pressure or temperature, gases begin to deviate from behavior described by the kinetic molecular theory. As pressure increases or temperature decreases, gases tend to condensate to liquids and non-ideal behavior begins to dominate. As gas molecules condense, they draw closer together, causing intermolecular forces to increase and the volume between the molecules to decrease, resulting in non-ideal behavior. Gases that do not follow the ideal behavior predicted by the kinetic molecular theory are called real gases. After conducting many experiments with gases under a variety of conditions, scientists developed a simple mathematical equation that predicts the behavior of an ideal gas. This equation, called the ideal gas law, describes the behavior of a gas using four variables, pressure, P, volume, V, temperature, T, and amount or number of moles of the gas, N. R, called the universal gas constant, serves as a proportionality constant, which is simply a multiplying factor that makes pressure times volume, P times V, equal to moles times temperature, N times T. Let's analyze the relationship between these four variables. For example, what do you think will happen to pressure, P, if we increase N, the number of moles? Assume that the other variables, volume and temperature, are held constant. Oh, okay, so if moles are increased, pressure will go up too? That's right. But how would you explain that on a molecular level? Think back to the kinetic molecular theory to help with this explanation. Well, I remember that pressure is caused by collisions of gas particles on the container. And more particles means more collisions and more pressure, right? That's absolutely right. So, Bella, can you think of a real-life example showing the relationship between the amount of gas and the pressure it exerts? I think I can. When I use hairspray, I'm using up the gas inside. So the pressure inside the container goes down, right? That's right, Bella. And when the pressure gets too low, you won't be able to spray anything else out. Okay, now let's see if you can make more predictions based on the ideal gas law. I'm going to conduct a number of demonstrations with gases, and I'd like you to do two things for each of the demonstrations. Before each demonstration, predict what will happen based on what you've learned about the ideal gas law. After each demonstration, explain the observations made at a molecular level using what you've learned about the kinetic molecular theory. Our first demonstration will explore the relationship between pressure and volume of a gas. Remember that the other variables described in the ideal gas law, in this case temperature and the moles of gas, will be held constant. For this demonstration, I have in front of me a vacuum pump, a bell jar, an inflated balloon, and a marshmallow. When I place the balloon containing trapped air into a container and remove some of the air using a vacuum pump, Predict what you think will happen to the volume of the air inside the balloon. Remember to use the ideal gas law, PV equals NRT, to help you make this prediction. And be prepared to explain your prediction. Now, Dory and Aubriana, what do you think? A vacuum reduces pressure, doesn't it? Yes, it does. Then I think when pressure goes down, the volume will go down too. 
Abriana, do you agree? Well, yeah, because if there's less pressure in the balloon, then it'll shrink. I think the opposite. When pressure goes down, volume has to go up. Right. The ideal gas law shows the pressure and the volume are inversely proportional to each other. So if pressure goes down, volume has to go up. Nice predictions. Let's watch the demonstration and observe what happens. I guess I was wrong. Volume actually does increase when pressure goes down. Correct. Just as Kayla described, pressure and volume are inversely related. Now, let's see if we can verify this relationship with the marshmallow. To make our data easier to analyze, I've drawn a face on the marshmallow. <laughs> now, Bella, what do you think will happen to the marshmallow when we remove a lot of the air from the bell jar? I think it'll get bigger like the balloon did. Let's try and see. Now, what do you think will happen if I let air back into the jar? I think it will shrink back down to its normal size. Wait, why did the marshmallow shrink down to almost nothing when you let air back in it? The vacuum removed the air inside the marshmallow as well as air surrounding it, causing the marshmallow to expand. But once the vacuum was removed, air returned to the bell jar, exerting pressure on the outside of the marshmallow, causing it to collapse. Now that we've verified the relationship between pressure and volume, let's see if each team can draw a model that explains what we just saw at a molecular level. I'll give you a few minutes to develop your model, and then I'll ask each team to explain their model to the rest of us. Let's take a break here to give you time to create your own models demonstrating the relationship between pressure and volume in gases. Like our teacher said, you'll need to be able to explain your model. So make sure you understand why the gases are behaving the way you think they will. When you're done, rejoin us at the top of the next video on the Unit 9 playlist.